Hi guys, Game Talk, Cup Game Twente, Ajax 1-0 at the Grolsveste. Not the easiest of games. Ajax, how do you feel after today's performance, man? Hold up, hold up, Juan. I'm done with this paneling thing uh, over and over again. It's time to switch it up. I will be the host today. You will be the panel. Let's Are do it. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, I'm that serious. So you want me to talk about the game today? Absolutely. All right, let's take care of business then. Let's switch it up. Here we go. All right. So, All right. Twente Ajax, quarterfinal of the Dutch Cup, 0-1. Another win for Heitinga. Today with us, as panel, Juan. Juan, take it away, man. What did you think of the game? Oh, I've never been in this seat before, man. Or actually, I've been seating, sitting here, but you, you know what I mean. Um, uh, honestly, bro, I'm blown away. Um, I'm blown away by the performance. Uh, of course, we're Ajax. We're supposed to win these games. But Twente has been incredible this season, especially at home games, undefeated. Um, so, and I think a lot of fans, you know, including me, myself, I was, I was a bit nervous coming into this game because... Yeah, you win from you win the games, Cambuur, Excelsior, all these kind of things. But you don't know how you will perform against the real test. Everybody was talking about the test, you know, for Heitinga. So, um, but the nice thing about this game is you learn a lot of things. You learn how good this team is, how far they are from three weeks ago, actually. So we transformed from not being able to win in the arena from Volendam to be able to defeat one of the toughest competitors in the league at their own turf. Um, it's incredible, man. It's incredible. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. Honestly, I'm blown away by, uh, by the management actually of Heidegger, who I selected as man of the match, to be honest. Um, because you, you were like, you were like, hold up when I'm paneling, I'm not giving even a player the man of the match. I'll give it to the coach. No, we have that powers, right? I think, I think Heidegger deserves it, man. I mean, you know, if you hear him pre-game, you know, what he, the things he says, you know, it's all. It's all logical, but it's also the way it's supposed to be. You know, it's about competition. It's about uh, showing yourself. And he, he's not like trying to find excuses or anything like that. He's like very straightforward. And a lot of fans like that. Just be, you know, uh, elaborate on things. And the thing I like about him is actually he discusses a lot of tactical things as well. When he gets questions, he goes tactics with us, you know, and I like that. So it's not like... Those coaches, sometimes they just generally say something just to say something. But Heidegger really means what he says. You can feel that. And not only that, the other thing that, I mean, I will come to the game in a bit, but I have to touch upon Heidegger also. The in-game management of him is incredible. I mean, we're talking about a young coach. And in the last few years, I haven't seen a coach of Ajax do what he does. You know? Even, like, even Eric Hoffman. Exactly. I'm even sorry. Eric, even even Eric Ten Hag, if you're being yeah, honest. Yeah, even Ten Hag, to be honest. Yeah, because one of the critical uh, critical things we had about Ten Hag, at least I did, was that it took a very long time for him to switch things up. You know, when you saw that things didn't go well, and there are a couple of examples of that, especially in Europe. But today, I thought when Klasse went out, to be honest, I was a bit like, hmm, I don't know. You know, the midfield was an issue a little bit. I agree. But Klaas was actually of the three pairs on that midfield. I thought he was the best player. And so he, I, he he brought he brought in Concesao for the viewers at the mm -hmm. right wing position. Uh, he put him there, and mm -hmm. Kudus went from the right winger to the ten position, uh, being more in a central role in the midfield for him, um, being able to put more pressure on the opponent like that. Yeah, absolutely. So, and we've seen this before, right? He did that with the previous games as well. So it's not illogical what he did. But just like in terms of form, I thought Klasse was not playing a bad game. Um, but, I mean, his change, basically, you know, Concesao was the first player with the ball, gave it to Tadic, Tadic gave it to Kudus, who really had a good run, you know, and he scored a goal. So everything clicked, you know, the whole change clicked in that goal and because of Heitinga. And not only that, but also... Um, also, like uh, the way we we approach the game from the start, you know, um, the pre the pre the, they put pressure on the opponent from from the get go, you know, yeah. and yeah, and um, we've been pressured a lot this season, especially by the opponents. But you could see that it was almost like uh, in the uh, the boss era, you know, like a three second rule. They were chasing like crazy. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, we were. I mean, the first fifteen minutes was like um, incredible in terms of intensity. It wasn't very good. Honestly, technical. We, I mean, there were mistakes here and there. But then I thought, you know, the game went our way a little bit, slightly, 
even though we didn't have a lot of chances, I think the first chance we had was with Berghais, who uh, had a shot like after 30 minutes. Um, so, look, we won the game, but to be very fair, I, I think we really made the difference in the last half an hour. I thought Twente was like fatigued after 60 minutes because right after the second half, like the first five minutes were okay, but then those 50 from 50 to 60 minutes, we were under pressure. Twente was really, you know, throwing everything they had at us. And we held uh, our ground, you know. I mean, we did well. Even Ruli had one good save, I think. And apart from that, not much to do. So I think we have to praise the whole organization. We have to also praise the fact that even though we haven't played uh, our best football, you know, because there are a lot of mistakes that happen, still this team is now a team. It's fighting. It's showing uh, what they are capable of. And that only in three weeks' time. And I have to credit the players. I have to credit the coach. And this is also very important, I think, mentally for the remainder of the season for two reasons. Next season, the next week, we have the new Berlin coming up. Of course, even the, the, real, top- the real test now because the first test we passed now. Yeah, well, look, Berlin is second in the Bundesliga. So they're they even- are on fire. They are on fire. They're winning every yeah, time. Absolutely. And I think we have to be really at our best. Um, but this gives me a little bit more confidence going into the game. You know, we're capable of transforming, of, of growing as a team. And not only that, the last game of the season is Twente again. So we have to go there again. So I hope, I hope by then we're already champions, of course. But if we're not, we have this win. Mentally, it's important, I think. I think it can be decider. But who knows? Um yeah, yeah so- I, I, I want you. I want you to 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 comment on something. You know, um, Heitinga made a few uh, changes within the squad. You know, it's the third time he's playing the same eleven. That's refreshing, also, uh, because our former coach switched it up every every game almost. So mm-hmm. I think that's a good thing. But the most important thing is he's playing Weindal now uh, as a left wing back and Rensch is back on that right wing back position compared to Bessie and uh, Sanchez in in previous games. How much of a difference do you think this makes? Because we had problems building up, you know, in the in the past, and uh, when especially when we got pressured, we had a hard time to to play play us out of trouble, you know. And now sometimes it's it's narrowly, but but we're we're coping with it, you know. How much does it have to do with with backs now that are able to receive the ball and and make a logical pass? Yeah, look, um, uh, to be very honest with you, I think it's an upgrade to um, to what we had before or how we played before. Uh, honestly, I do see Bassi in this system m- more suitable as a centre-back than a left-back, to be honest, even though he played very good as a left-back at the Rangers. But I think it's different, you know, in terms of system and what we expect here. Um, I have to say, though, I think our wing-backs are not the strongest players in our squad yet. So... Ranch, for instance, had an opportunity uh, with uh, in the first half. Kudus had one of his best moments, and he gave the ball to Ranch. It was an easy pass, basically, to you know to score, and he overhit that pass. Yeah. I think I think at this level, playing at Ajax, that should be a good pass. But you know, but in all positiveness, you know, um, the overlaps are happening now because in the past with Blind and Tadic as as, as left winger and, and left back. Now we see on both sides that uh, overlaps happen now and then because Tadic moved to the middle. So there's more speed on, on the sides of the pitches. Not as the much. Pitch. As the pitch. Yeah, I agree. It should it should be like that. But I didn't see that today, to be honest. Not that much. Especially not in the first half. Not even Wangle, which Wangle is known for, you know, at this time at AZ. I think, honestly, that it has to do a little bit with how to be careful. Uh, maybe putting it like tactical. Um, not to go too much up front because also maybe Hatch has thinking I have Taylor as the anchor and we have enough football players on the midfield. So maybe he doesn't want to push too, too many people up front, you know, because we can be vulnerable with Alvarez at the back, you know, as we spoke about this earlier. So again, I think the wingers are doing well, you know, the wing backs, but um, in terms of attacking, they can do better, in my opinion, yeah. much better. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's another win for us now. So uh, now first, I believe we play RKC this weekend. Correct. Yeah. 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 And then uh, after that, Union Berlin. So hopefully RKC won't be a problem. But the next big thing uh, that will be happening is Union Berlin. I want you to uh, elaborate on one last thing before um, I want your prediction. Um, 
first of all, I want to touch a little bit on Salah Hedin. Uh, he has been loaned out to Twente by Ajax. Uh, he played not in his natural position today, but in a midfield position. What did you think of his performance today? I, th I thought he was the best player of Twente uh, by a mile. And um, the thing I like about him, I mean, you know, we know about the youth and the youth before he got that injury. He was already a very talented player. Uh, but, you know, when you get like an injury like that, the knee injury, etc., I mean, it throws you back so much. Um, so, again, he's loaned out by Ajax to Twente. I think if he develops himself like that, keeps playing like this, you know, till the end of the season, I think Ajax should re reconsider maybe uh, to, uh, to get him. And not even for the midfield, I think maybe for the left-back position. But it's an issue because we have Vandal, and now we're basically giving Hato a chance also on that position. So, I don't know. It's, it's hard, but... Um, I think we should be we should be very mindful when players are loaned out and they're performing so well, whether we should just let them leave or whether we should give them a chance. You you already elaborated a bit on it because I wanted to ask you, would that be for his natural left back position where we saw him a lot in, in Young Ajax, for example? Or is he also an option for you as a midfielder? Is that a stretch for now or no option at all? Um, I don't know, honestly. Uh, it's It's a hard question because... Um, I think maybe, maybe it could be a possibility. It depends, but it's I don't know. Soon, soon mm -hmm. to say. The thing is, at ICE, we have so many midfielders already, you know, and the only position that we're look, really looking for a player, because probably Alvarez will leave, is the anchor position. I don't know if he's suited for that position, you yeah. know? So, yeah, I don't know. Okay, um, one last thing I want to touch upon. I saw this stat uh, on, on television today that uh, Twente, since 1997, scored 41 adjacent cup matches in their own home. Yeah. So this is the first time uh, since then, and that's over 25 years, that they didn't score. So I think we should give the team some credit and, and like you did, uh, give the coach some credit. You, you made a man of the match, and I think you're right with, uh, with doing that. If you would have um, had to give it to a player today and not the coach, who would be your star player today? Uh, yeah, I uh, of course, I would give it to Kudus for, for many reasons. Um, one of the reasons is that he, he's been the player, I think, from the whole squad that had to shift so much from positions and playing on positions that are not really natural to him. I mean, people might argue, but he's not a false nine. And, of course, in the right wing position now, he's switching up with Berghuis and he can come a little bit to the middle. So it's a bit more natural to him because he can play on the in the center. But we all knew, and we've all been arguing on this channel for a long time, me included, that Kudus has everything to be a very good player for this Ajax. And a lot of Ajax fans were doubting him, especially on Twitter. Um, I mean, I can I can mention so many, so many people really want him sold, basically, in the January window, last season, et cetera, et cetera. The thing is, um, you you can see that he has the potential. You can see that he has certain elements in his game that are missing with other players in our team. So these players, you should you should be a bit more careful of saying he doesn't fit the system or he doesn't do this or that because these are the players that can make a difference for your team. So and he has been proving it not only today but in the last few matches. Actually, since Hatik has started, uh, you know, coaching Kudus has been excellent. So I think he's doing very well, and uh, he deserves all the credit. He deserves all of it. And I, I think, yeah, hopefully he can continue like that, and it will benefit the whole team and whole Ajax for the rest of the season. So kudos for kudos. Um, that's it, bro. Uh, thank you so much. I want to ask you one last question. What do you think of paneling today? It's a first for you? Yeah. Did you hard. like it? Did you like it? No, I'm going back to hosting tomorrow when we have the live stream. But I want to finish off uh, saying one more thing. Um, Again, uh, like I started, you know, this uh, this talk, uh, Hadja deserves a bunch of credit. And also how he, yeah, I mean, amazing. And if he continues like this, there's no doubt in my mind that he, he can uh, he can remain the coach for the, for the next season as well. Because the thing that he's doing all makes sense. He's changing, he's changing basically the whole morale of the team, you know, getting results. And in a very short amount of time, basically, and not only that, the players are working and, you know, fighting for him, et cetera, et cetera. So all these things that he did, the rules, um, trying to 
to make them aware of where we are in, on, on, in the league and what we want to aspire and what you should do when you're at Ajax. All these kind of things are clicking, are working. And I know maybe I'm being a little bit too premature again. Some people will say, yeah, uh, we only had a few games. No, I mean, we cannot underestimate what he has done. And not only that, but we defeated one of the toughest opponents at their turf this season. They're a very good team. Honestly, today, there were margins. It were really margins. They didn't have a lot of big chances. We didn't have a lot of big chances. But Kudus made a difference with that moment. And but the, the sole difference also is that uh, under Schroeder, we also had these kind of games, but the intensity wasn't there. And exactly. maybe the level of play wasn't optimal uh, at times today, but they were fighting hard and the intensity was there. So we won the duels. And yeah. I think this should be the, the, the basis that you have to move from if, if it's not clicking at first, you know. And that's a big difference, uh, in my opinion. Absolutely. The intensity level was from was, was amazing. And we were fitter, actually, as a team than uh, Twente because they were burned out after 60 minutes, like I said. And, yeah, I mean, we look forward to what uh, the next games. And I'm pretty confident, actually, that we will have a good run uh, till the end of the season. Thank you for uh, for your contribution today, uh, Juan. And thank you all for, uh, for watching. And let us know in the comments what you thought of the match today. And of course, what you thought of our fresh new panel and his performance today. Uh, leave a comment. And uh, while you're at it, don't forget to like and subscribe.